Good morning and welcome. Throughout this week we're looking at Psalm 95, what's often called the Benite. It's a wonderful summons to come before the Lord, come with songs and shouts of joy, but also, as we'll see this morning, with, with reverence, we're to bow down in worship. Let me pray for our time together now. Father, thank you for your invitation to us to come and for your promise that as we draw near to you, so you will draw near to us. Please help us now by your spirit to come before you by faith. And as we hear your word, please stir our hearts to rejoice in you and humble us to worship you reverently as you deserve. For your name's sake. Amen. Before I read the couple of verses we're going to be focusing on today, let me read from the beginning of the psalm with its call to come before the Lord with songs of joy. So from verse one, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. After that initial summons to come, the psalmist is now going to give us another summons, but the mood this time is rather different. It's not come with exuberant joy. And now the instruction is to come with reverent worship. Not to sing and shout aloud, but to bow down and kneel before this great God. Let me read the next couple of verses. Come, let us bow down in worship, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. I know for myself I need both that call to exuberant joy and this call to, to reverent worship. What's rather striking to me is that this, this note of reverence comes by telling us to bow down in worship. Just as the psalm gets more personal, God is being remembered here, not simply as the creator of everything that is, but more specifically for who he is to us, his people. The psalmist says he's our maker and our shepherd. Let's ponder those two things just briefly. First, the psalmist says, let's kneel before the Lord, our maker. Not only did his hands shape the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks, he made us, he shaped us and all that we are. If the sea is his because he made it, well, no less truly, we are his, for he made us. But actually, because I think in these verses the thought is particularly who we are as his people. As we remember that he's our maker, I think we're not simply to remember that he's our creator. I think we're to remember that he is our redeemer. Because he made us his people through redemption. Through Jesus' death on the cross for us. Actually in a sense we are doubly his in creation and redemption and even more than the mountain peaks or the ocean depths we should acknowledge him as our lord and our maker more than anything else in all creation we are those who should humbly reverently bow down in worship of him he's our maker but then also the psalmist reminds us he's our shepherd. We are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. 
He's no hireling caring for someone else's sheep on someone else's land. No, we are his flock and he is our shepherd. A shepherd who knows each one of us, who cares for each one of us, who provides for our needs, who will protect us from every harm. A shepherd who leads and guides and who does so perfectly. That's true, whatever our circumstances might be at the moment. In fact, it's a truth we should cling to all the more firmly when things seem hard and difficult. He might be leading us through dark valleys, and yet we can be absolutely sure his purpose is kind. He wants to lead us to green pastures. So as the psalmist says, come, let's bow down in worship and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's pray and being mindful of his care for us, his mercy to us as our maker and our shepherd. Let's begin our prayers by praying together the prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now in a moment of quiet, let's bring before this God particular concerns that might be on our hearts, anxieties and worries we might have. A moment of quiet. Father God, as our maker, you know us perfectly and all our concerns. And as our shepherd, you care for us perfectly. Help us to cast all our anxieties on you and to trust you. And humbly to submit to your loving providence. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song picks up this truth of knowing God's shepherd care.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.